progress. The future is now. The species coming together for the betterment of mankind. Catchy slogans, huh? Yeah, yeah. Neat ideas, especially the, you know, the notion that we can see progress happening in real time. But what is progress, really? And how does our species actually do it? There is no denying that our species has, you know, come pretty far, relatively speaking, from where we started. Of course, the origin of our species is debatable, depending on what, you know, you believe in. But our technological progression is, you know, historical fact. And along with, you know, our technological progression comes a, a more thorough understanding of the universe, you know, the physical universe around us. As humans, we, we expand outwards. We are explorers. It's just a facet of human nature. And often, you know, to expand is to survive or at least to have a better chance of it. The progress is good, right? Um, generally speaking, I mean, it, it raises the likelihood of our survival and propagation. The longer our species survives, the farther we can go. Except that's not the only thing that defines human nature. Far from it. There are other factors about our species that kind of get in the way of progress and can get in the way of it in a real big way. What if the collective idea of progress starts to conflict with the true definition of progress? I grew up watching Star Trek, okay? So in the Star Trek lore, humanity has basically progressed to the point where they've supposedly eliminated crime, hunger, and money. Humans no longer chase wealth. It's no longer the driving force of people's lives. Humanity, for the most part, you know, it, it lives for the idea of bettering itself and, and helping other alien species or whatever. It's all harmonious, happy peace, at least internally. Uh, don't just take it from me. How big is this ship? There are 24 decks. Almost 700 meters long. How much does this thing cost? The economics of the future are somewhat different. Money doesn't exist in the 24th century. No money? You mean you don't get paid? The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. Sounds nice, right? I mean, it should. It's uh, literally fantasy. It's an artist version of our best case outcome for humanity. Even the best art, though, must still give way to reality. Here's another short clip from the same movie with the same characters, and it loops back around to the same subject matter. But this time, it's about practical application. They're on the move again. The Borg just overran three of our defense checkpoints. They've adapted every modulation of our weapons. It's like we're shooting blanks. We have to work on finding another way to modify our weapons so they'll be more effective. In the meantime, tell your men to stand their ground. Sir. Fight hand to hand if they have to. Aye, sir. Okay, I don't know jack about the 24th century, but everybody out there thinks that staying here and fighting the Borg is suicide. None of them understand the Borg as I do. Six years ago, they assimilated me into their collective. I had their cybernetic devices implanted throughout my body. I was linked to the hive mind. Every trace of individuality erased. So you can imagine, my dear, I have a somewhat unique perspective on the Borg, and I know how to fight them. Now, if you will excuse me, I have work to do. The Borg hurt you, and now you're going to hurt them back. In my century, we don't succumb to revenge. We have a more evolved sensibility. Bullshit! I saw the look on your face when you shot those Borg on the holodeck. You were almost enjoying it. Oh, come on, Captain. You're not the first man to get a thrill from murdering someone. I see it all the time. Get out! Or what? You'll kill me? Like you killed Ensign Lynch? There was no way to save him. You didn't even try. Where was your involved sensibility then? I don't have time for this. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your little quest. Captain Ahab has to go hunt his whale. This is not about revenge. Liar! This is about saving the future of humanity! Jean-Luc, blow up the damn ship! No! No! They invade our space, and we fall back. 
They assimilate entire worlds, and we fall back. Not again. The line must be drawn here, this far, no farther. And I will make them pay for what they've done. So even if our most fantastical art still has to operate within the constraints of human nature, what does that say about our ability to truly progress? We know progress can and does happen, but how does it happen? How does our own human nature affect it and even potentially curb it? Human nature is defined as the common dispositions, characteristics, and capabilities of people. These aspects are foundations of human thought and behavior. There are over 50 of these, supposedly, but what about the first three? Need. Humans are born with emotional and physical needs. It must be regularly satisfied to avoid pain and decline. For example, the need to eat, be safe. Instinct is the second one. Humans have instincts and uh, we also have the ability to override these with higher level thought processes. A person may feel a strong urge to flee from danger, but they may be able to override that when and where this makes sense. It's called courage. Lastly, self. Humans have a sense of self such that they defend what they view as their self-interests and they also have a a sense of self-esteem, self-importance. Human nature is not something that we are totally incapable of realizing and overriding. We see it all the time, but it does take force of will to do that, to varying degrees according to the person in the situation that we're talking about. Nevertheless, the fact that it is our very nature and that those aspects are always there, under the surface, and they stand ready to influence us, often without us even knowing it. Now, those first three aspects of human nature, need, instinct, and self, they can be good, and they can be bad. It depends on how we apply them and how we moderate them. Notice, you know, that none of them automatically tend towards a sense of greater good. Sacrifice is not at the top of that list, is it? Sacrifice is necessary often to achieve a greater good but it's not really conducive to survival not on an individual basis nevertheless sacrifice is required for progress nothing is free the question then of course becomes that of the sacrifice who will sacrifice what the thing about sacrifice is it must be done willingly if not we have other words to describe it so progress requires us to moderate our own nature and also to make sacrifices the end result of those things is progress. Therefore, progress is a byproduct of humans doing the right thing for the right reasons. Now, what happens if that process is corrupted? What happens if we don't moderate our need, instinct, or self? What happens when progress stops being the accidental byproduct and becomes the ultimate goal? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I give you progressivism. Progress isn't just their ultimate goal, it's defined by progressives. And since the entire religion of progressivism is centered around doing progress, it is automatically anti-progress just by its very existence. Remember, progress is a byproduct. It can't be the goal. So if you are a progressive, you're doing it wrong. When you make progress the goal, is a breeding ground for the most unbalanced and dishonest aspects of human nature. Need, instinct, and self are no longer moderated to the point where the most severe extremes of those aspects are instead celebrated. Example, we wanted to go to the moon. Going to the moon was dangerous. Our astronauts had to moderate all three aspects of their human nature in a really big way. Their own need to survive for their family their instincts telling them that strapping themselves to a bomb and blasting out of Earth's orbit was not conducive to survival, their own self and the risk of losing themselves. Yet they did it willingly and they saw it as the amazing opportunity that it was. Personally, probably not for progress at all. They did it for themselves and for their families and ultimately, maybe 
on the hind end of things for their country. Now imagine a world where progress was the only goal and the individual wasn't treated as a special person applauded for their achievements. In fact, we don't have to imagine that world. Look up cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. He knew he was a dead man before he ever strapped himself into that Soyuz capsule. He slammed into the earth at 100 feet per second after the parachute system did not deploy correctly and it resulted in a devastating explosion. Why did he go to his death? He knew that if he didn't go, they would charge him criminally, his family would be ruined, and they would just send the backup pilot. The backup pilot, by the way, was a guy named Yuri Gagarin. You probably heard of him. The launch would not be stopped. The Soyuz capsule would not be fixed. Someone else would have to die for progress. In the end, the pursuit of progress for progress's sake ended with Komarov's sacrifice being an all but totally empty one. The Soviet Union lost the space race, in case anyone has forgotten. So what have we learned from our own history of making progress instead of allowing it to happen uh, not a f thing apparently if we had learned anything there wouldn't be a progressive movement progress is a byproduct achieved by learning lessons from our history in order to build upon our past discoveries we stand upon the shoulders of giants we use what they discovered and then look beyond instead our new version of progress is to erase the past, unlearn what we know to be true, and then attempt to construct a new truth. This is the opposite of progress. We're not standing on the shoulders of those that came before us, we're canceling them and telling ourselves that we know better. That's regression, by the way. It's the opposite of progression. What new things are we discovering? What are we learning? What are we doing now? that's new. Is America united in a common interest or divided by those that seek to reimagine things? Look at Hollywood. Sequels, prequels, reboots, all set to erase the legacy of their own subject matter. Justice is being reimagined and bail reformed. How bad has it gotten? I don't know. Remind me again. What is a woman? Yeah, um, it's gotten that bad. Good day. See you around, Ahab.